Peace everyone, Unmaskart here and welcome back once again for another live pastel tutorial. Today we are going to be doing a gray fox. This was a request that uh, popped up a lot in just the past week, so I thought since it uh, was growing in such popularity I decided to switch gears. I was originally going to do a snowy landscape today, but after I saw so many uh, request for a wolf, I decided to uh, go with this instead. So real quick, the easy traceable line art and the reference photo that I'm going to be using today is in the video description. It's free, you can just uh, click on the link and download it and use it as you wish. Um, also I have all of my supplies, you can see that they're listed here right, uh, right below me. And I also have links for them in the video description also. So with that said, let's just go ahead and get started with this tutorial. And um, I wanted to show you how I transfer my graphite lines over to my Claire Fontaine pastel mat. So I'm gonna start with that. Now there's a few different ways that you can do this. Uh, you could take the line art that I created, the Easy Trace line art that you can download, uh, you can just print it out on computer paper, and then what you'll do is uh, rub graphite or black pastel onto, I, I prefer graphite personally uh, than, than pastel. Um, you just rub the graphite on the back and then you place it onto your paper and then you trace over the line art. That is exactly what I did. Uh, except I drew the line art, I didn't trace it, uh, or I mean I didn't print it out. Um, and so you just lay this on there, tape down the corners, and then draw and you'll be left with a nice ghost image of your graphite. Uh, you can also take a kneaded eraser and lift it up a little bit if it appears to be too dark. So that is the first thing to do. Um, the next thing that I'm going to be doing with this piece is I'm going to be using frisket or masking film to cover my woof up and I'm going to do the dark black background. Um, you probably could have just done this on black Clairefontaine pastel mat, however I don't have any uh, and I'm perfectly fine with doing using my black pastel. So uh, it also gives me the opportunity to uh, show how to apply the frisket or the masking film. Uh, as you can see here, I have the shape of my wolf cut out. Uh, I have just the eye drawn in so I can make sure I have it lined up properly. But essentially, I use, uh, to cut out these details, I use these really small sewing scissors. Uh, I think they're sewing scissors, I don't know, but they're really small and I can articulate them very well around these uh, details here. So that's how I cut it out. Uh, nothing fancy there. Um, I draw on it with a pen uh, so the lines show up. That's how I draw on that to, to cut it out. And now I'm going to show you how to line everything up. Uh, obviously I'm just going to do it the best that I can here. Um, the most important features like the nose and the ear placement, that's going to be the uh, really important kind of landmarks that I use to line this drawing here up uh, but even if you don't get it right the first time you can just peel it up and redo it so what I do is I, I lay it down and then I, I take a corner here and sometimes it just takes a little wrinkling of the corner until you if you just flick the corner eventually you'll get lift there you go I got a separation right there so what I do is I, I peel it back and then I crease I crease the this part. I don't crease the actual, actual film, I crease the paper underneath. And then I just lay it back down. And then I hold that corner, because that should be the placement. So I lift everything back up, and then I grab the paper, and I just peel it like this. Like that. And it laid down exactly where I had it, which, as you might be able to see, is not where I need it. So I'm gonna have to peel it back up. I, I knew that doing this live would be somewhat of a headache, but um, I wanted to show everybody how I do it. Uh, like I said, this is this masking film is 
very low tack and so it's very easy to just readjust and get where you need it. I'm going to line up the eye and the ears. Anything else that's slightly off I'm pretty content with. There we go. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. I'm just going to lightly press that down. Any of the excess graphite, this is a reason I like to use graphite as opposed to uh, some other color of pastel. Uh, graphite's really easy to erase if you need to, and it is also um, coverable with pastels. I mean, pastels are coverable with pastels, but if I were to use black pastel, then you know I might have a hiccup there with some of my white fur. All right, that's all laid down and nice and smooth. Uh, so I'm just going to start with some black, and I'm just going to fill in the background. Uh, when you're working with masking film, I recommend always working away from the edge. So you'll see I'll just kind of pull away from the edge. That will prevent any of the pastel from going underneath or the motion uh, lifting up the masking film. I do the same thing when I work around the edges of my tape. Uh, I Real quick, I'm using the Rembrandt Soft Pastels, and I have some of my Carbothello pencils here. Uh, this is just going to be part one of the Woof tutorial. Part two will be next week, so make sure you subscribe or are subscribed so you don't miss that. Uh, but this week we are going to do, uh, we're just going to do filling in the background. I'm going to peel up the masking film, and then I'm going to do... Uh, some of the base layers of the fur. I'm going to do the eyes uh, or the eye and the nose also uh, with some of my Carbothello pastel pencils. That way I don't lose the that detail in my drawing before laying down some of the uh, foundational colors of the fur. But we're not going to be doing any of like the major detailing stuff. We're going to only focus on like the fundamental layers. That way when we get started on this next week, we should be able to finish it. Hello Joy, Pumpkin Spice, uh, Christy, uh, Sneaks, Donane, uh, Yannick, Esther, Barbara, Miriam, uh, and Sandra, Richmond, and anyone else I might have missed, thank you guys for coming by the live stream. Uh, if any of you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. I love love answering questions, so um, just uh, let me know. All right, um, I am going to add a little bit of color into my background. Uh, the reference photo is just completely black but uh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, the Wolf has some nice orange kind of brown colors into it and the complement to orange is blue so I'm actually going to take some nice rich blue this is, looks like cobalt blue and I'm just going to add a little bit of it into the background. This is only going to show up like really really subtly but it's just going to add a bit of a bit of complementary color between the Wolf and the background because I think if you if you leave the background just flat black, uh, I'll show you how to do the snowflakes um, after we finish the woof because I'm going to do all the snowflakes at once uh, in part two. But for now, I'm just going to color in the background, and I want to add just a little bit of blue here, and you know what? Maybe even a touch of purple. Yeah, I think I'm going to do just a, a little bit of purple, maybe up in this corner here. and a little bit over here. It's only going to show up very faintly in the final product, but it will add just a little bit more depth to the dark to the dark background. Uh, doing just plain black ironically does not uh, increase the depth. Sometimes you just have to add a little bit of a little bit of subtle color into the background. You could you could do green, you could do blue, you could do brown, 
Um, you could do all kinds of different colors, uh, whichever one you feel like doing. You could even use some of the colors that we're going to later on use in the woof uh, and add that to the background just to you know, create a little bit of color harmony there. Uh, but uh, essentially, I like to do complementary colors. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I really enjoy incorporating subtle complementary colors into my work. And blue and orange is my favorite two colors for complements. Uh, this first layer most likely won't cover the paper entirely, but I need to kind of gauge where I'm at with my coverage. That's why I'm blending out right now, and I'm just using the Pan Pastel Soft tool. Uh, I do not have a link for these in the video description, but uh, it's it's just a Pan Pastel Soft tool that I that I always use in my tutorials. So it, they're very easy to find. They're not specialty tools at all. Very very common pastel tools, so shouldn't have any problem finding them. Yeah, you can see here, I don't quite have enough pastels there, and that's what I need to evaluate with this first, this first blending stage, just to see where my coverage is at. Just like when you're uh, using the pastel, always blend away from the edge of the tape and the masking film so you don't lift it up. Uh, what is your best technique for blending with pastels? Uh, to be honest with you, I, when I first started pastels, I didn't really like using uh, this blending knife. But as I kind of experimented with it more and more, I found to really enjoy the control that I have with it. Uh, in the beginning, I really just liked to use my finger and just blend with my finger. Uh, but um, using this tool keeps my hands quite a bit cleaner. And I do have a lot of control with it. Uh, and the other thing is when you use your finger, you create a lot of pastel dust that you'll kind of see around my, the edges of my paper here. But when you use the sponge tool, the sponge tool picks a lot of that, that excess dust up and I know that dust can be irritating for some people. It was never really irritating to me, but um, just having a cleaner workspace, cleaner hands, you can see, you know, my fingers still get dirty, but uh, I've, I've just grown to really enjoy working with this tool. Uh, what would be good beginner pastels to try out? Oh, excellent question. Um, well, these Rembrandts are relatively inexpensive. Uh, I have a set of 72, I think. I think it's a set of 72. Can't find my box. No, it's actually a set of 90. Yeah, so I have a set of 90 here. Um, and they have great, uh, they, have, they have great color range, but if you're looking for something even cheaper, you can get the 48 set of the Faber-Castell uh, mini sticks uh, those ones are like 15 to 18 dollars um, you can find those uh, you can find them on my website if you go over to my website uh, and check out the supplies that i recommend uh, i have the those listed there but i used those for quite a long time and i use those in my intro to pastel uh, course that i also have on my website I know a lot of you already have my pastel course, and uh, it sometimes feels a little redundant to plug it in my, my tutorials, but I know that I have uh, new subscribers that might not know that I have an intro to pastel course. Uh, I have the link for that in the description. I've had a, a lot of people uh, really enjoy that, that pastel course. I get... Uh, I get messages and images and pictures sent to me uh, every day of people that are that are working through the course and doing the projects and having a lot of fun with it. So it's always worth bringing up in the live streams. Oh, hello, Renee. Good to see you.
we're at the very, very easy stage of the past LPs right now, but it's still time consuming. Uh, I definitely recommend taking your time, even if this part of the process seems very easy. You definitely don't want to peel this off until you are 100% certain that you have your background the way you want it. So even after you finish your background, I just recommend taking a minute or two to, uh, to consider adjusting any of your, your colors or additional, uh, you know, toning colors. Like I'm going to add a bit more blue and purple, I think, because the black is kind of just devouring it right now. And as you can see, I still have quite a bit of the paper showing through, uh, and I'm not going to peel this off until I have my background 100% covered entirely. I don't want any of the paper showing through at all, so I'm going to be very conscious of that. I'm going to make sure that I, I really cover it up with the pastel. That's one of the uh, common mistakes that I see with with both pastels and colored pencils, as I see a lot of people um, kind of moving ahead too quickly. You know, they want to get to the fun part, uh, and they don't ever get full coverage with the medium that they're using. They they kind of let the paper show through, and that's okay if you, if that's the look you're going for. But uh, when you're doing realism, uh, you you can't let the paper show through. The paper showing through does not help with uh, capturing a very vivid, realistic looking image. And that's what I'm trying to uh, teach here today. The, the more coverage you get on your paper, you know, the less, the less the paper shows through, the more vibrant your colors are going to look, the more saturated, and just the more polished the artwork is going to look after you're finished. Oh, hello, Chrissy. Good to see you. Uh, if I used black paper instead of doing this, is there anything I should do on the black paper? Uh, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Black paper would probably just appear a bit more covered if you, you know, wanted to also apply a layer of black pastel. And just like here, I'm incorporating a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple into my background just so that it doesn't look so flat and, and dull. So here, I'm, I'm going to add a little bit more purple up here. Um, but if you if you leave the black paper blank, then it's you know it's just going to be black. Um, and I'm not saying that it's going to look bad. I'm just saying, you know, personally, I like to create some a little bit of depth, depth, a little bit of character to the background, especially if it just appears to be completely black. Um, but if you if you did that, if you left uh, the black paper black, what I would recommend is flipping the um, the masking film. So instead of covering the woof, you would cover the background and then you'd fill in the woof, peel it off, and then finish off the details around the edges. That's how I would approach it. That way the background is nice and clean and um, <clears throat> you have all those nice clean sharp edges as well. <coughs> all right, let's try to blend this out one more time. See if I got the coverage that I want. Sometimes around the edges of the masking film is a little delicate, so just gotta get in there right at the edge and really push that pastel down into the paper. Now we can see 
well maybe you can see hopefully you can see how much softer this corner looks in comparison to these these rougher areas where I didn't have the pastel completely covering the paper uh, for me I am a huge fan of that like velvety smooth finish when you have the paper completely covered and it just it looks really really nice to me and it's what appeals to me the most about pastels which is also a reason why I don't uh, mix pastels with colored pencils pastels have like this just smooth um, like velvet finish and colored pencils they have that you know they, they have that more waxy finish and I, I just don't like those competing uh, textures so a, a lot of people are fans of mixing pastels and colored pencils uh, and I just can't bring myself to do it because when I get that nice smooth velvety finish of the pastels I just don't want to I just don't want to change that texture but you'll know when you'll know when you have the paper covered yeah you'll know because the there's the nothing replaces that that velvety smooth finish Uh, if I draw realistically, is it recommended not to use outlines or line work? Um, not necessarily, uh, because I'm, I draw realistically and I use lines uh, for my sketches and things like that. The important thing is that you know how to hide them. Uh, so I keep my lines very, very soft. Uh, the technique that I shared at the beginning with the backtracing method that I use to apply my lines to my pastel mat. I use that same method when doing colored pencil work as well, and then I use my kneaded eraser to lift up, to lift up all of the excess graphite. So I have like the faintest ghost line possible, and it's very, very easily covered by uh, colored pencils or pastels in this case. I want to add even more blue because it kind of disappeared a little bit. I don't want to go crazy with the blue. I just want um, I just want a hint of it here. I don't want to lighten the background. I still want it to be black, but I want if you I want somebody to that if they look at this uh, original piece uh, because it might not show up in the camera all that well. I want them to be able to pull out that blue, but only if they look hard enough. Don't want it to be blue. I want it to be like the darkest possible blue, where if you don't pay attention, you just think it's black. That probably shows up black on the camera. And I have a little bit of purple over here in this corner too, which probably just shows up as black on the camera. Uh, this masking film is the best thing since sliced bread. You taught me that tip and I use it all the time. Yes, Chrissy, yes it is. And uh, I'm glad you, you, you picked it up and, and tried it out after I shared it. Um, I am good with my background now. Remember I said when you finish the background, just take a moment before you peel this off to double check and make sure you have the background that you want. And I have the background that I want, so I'm going to peel this off. And this is my one of my favorite parts. I love the clean edges that I get. Bam. Perfect. Uh, and technically you could save this, but I'm not going to redraw this, so I'm just going to toss that away, grab a tissue really quick, and clean my fingers off. I'm going to grab some of my Carbothello pencils now, and I'm going to do uh, the eye and the nose really, really quickly before applying the general colors around the fur. Just put that over there. Let's start with uh, 
start with the eye, and I'm gonna grab my black Carbothello pencil. Move these out of the way. This is a piece of glassine paper here. And let's see, I'm just going to pencil in the eye here. Not a whole lot to this eye. Need a gray. Uh, that was black. This is the gray, which is seven two six. I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Uh, question, do you use sometimes an underpainting and what kind of painting should you use and why? Uh, I never use an underpainting. Um, I th now, I, I can't guarantee it works, um, but you might be able to use watercolors. I'm not 100% certain. I'm not, I, I have no reason to, to try that. Um, and with, with pastels, you, the coverage is so easy that uh, an underpainting seems... Um, it doesn't seem like the most ideal way to start with pastels because the coverage is already so quick um, and it is so opaque that an underpainting would kind of just be a waste of time. In, in my opinion um, so I, I don't I don't think that that would be the most uh, most effective way to, to utilize your time with pastels uh, so uh, if if you wanted an underpainting or if you wanted that that kind of technical approach uh, pan pastels I mean, technically you just kind of use that as an underpainting uh, in a way Now I'm going to bring in some highlights with, what gray is this? This gray is 720, so I'm just going to bring in a bit of a lighter part to round the eye. And when I blend out my pencils, I like to use a pencil smudger, pencil stump, whatever you want to call it. It works very well. Apply a little bit more black here. I'm not going to try to, to finish the eye 100%. Uh, I just want to get these, these details in uh, so that I have the placement exactly where I need it before moving on to doing the base layers of the fur. Uh, and, you know, getting back to that question regarding underpainting, we're, we're essentially going to be doing an underpainting of the fur with our pastels here. Let's put the pupil in now. kind of the iris right around the pupil. This is 610. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of brown here. Start coloring in that golden iris.
Uh, I've been practicing art for three months now and want to ask, is using references to draw okay? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, using a reference, uh, actually the, the idea of avoiding the use of a reference just baffles me. I know some people, um, some artists, you know, they want to uh, speak against the, the use of reference photos, but I can assure you that um, the likelihood of you finding a professional artist that does not utilize reference photos is very, 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 very slim. Um, you just you just can't draw things you don't know what looks what it looks like so um, kind of have to use reference photos All right. oh that uh, creamy yellow color I used was 692 uh, I'm gonna go a little bit more yellow gray with uh, 690 And I'm just going to continue shaping, shaping the iris uh, to get that rounded, spherical look to it. A little bit more brown, I think I need. Or maybe, ah, uh, no, I need a gray. I need like a middle of the ground gray. Oh, here we go. This one is 706. Just perfect middle range gray to start shading some of that iris. Switch back to the black. Oh, hello, Christian from the Philippines. My nephew's name is Christian also. All right, now I need a little bit of a highlight color. Let's see, I think this is going to work. This is, uh, oh goodness, this is a 105, and it's not quite as sharp as I'd like it to be. So I'm gonna do a little bit of sharpening here with this tool. Just a touch of highlight. Not, I'm not quite grabbing white yet, but I am now. So that was like part of the highlight. I'm gonna put nice bright highlight there, and I'm just gonna lighten up center of that iris just a little bit. Use my blending stump to a tiny bit of blending. All right, now I'm going to uh, switch to the nose. The noses, they can be, they can be tricky sometimes. Uh, I'm going to actually start with a nice uh, medium gray that we used in the nose already, I mean in the eye. Uh, that's the, uh, the 720. I'm going to do, uh, this is actually the highlight of the nose.
it won't look like much of a highlight right next to white but I will grab the black in just a moment and fill in the nostril here Grab the darker gray, which is the 706, and work the transitions a little bit. Uh, nose kind of does this shape here, just to fill that in with a little bit of that gray. And then the top side kind of ends here, and then curls in like that. The top side has a bit of brown in it, so I'm going to just grab that same brown we use in the eye, that's 610. I'm just going to apply a little bit of brown here. And a little bit of that yellow to lighten it, the 692. And then I'm going to grab a darker gray. Let's see, actually, I kind of like this purple color here. This dark grayish purple, which is 770. Uh, I'm going to incorporate a little bit of that. Every nose has a little bit of purple. It's not a that's not a real rule. That's just something I say. And grab some black and do some darker toning of the nose. Again, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm using a little bit more of that purple here. And I'm going to use the blending stump to do a bit of blending before adding any more color. Shaping, shaping the colors that I have on here now. bit more black. Got to darken this nose quite a bit. Make sure you get the contrast right, otherwise the highlights won't pop as much as they should. That's how you get the eyes and the noses and, and those, those shiny, wet looking objects. That's how you get them looking, well, shiny and glossy and wet looking is you have to maximize the contrast so you have to get you have to get your darks as dark as possible there we go let's do a little bit more blending here and i'm seeing a hint of blue in the nose as well. In those transition areas, transition areas uh, around the highlights. So I'm going to grab this blue, uh, 400, colors 400. I'm going to just add a little bit of, tiny bit of blue around some of the highlights here. Those transitions between the highlights and the shadows, that's where I'm adding this blue. 
to overdo it with the blue. And blend out again my stump. I, f I, I really feel like these need a better name. Stump is not just not a good name for them. I'll just call it a blending stick. Does that work for everybody? From now on, these are blending sticks. Alright, I need a little bit of black at the top side of the nose just to darken it a tiny bit more. It's just a little bit too bright. Blend it again. For adding the final highlights, I'm gonna grab white. And add those sprinkles of Highlight that kind of right there around the corner of the nose here. And then all of the little dots that show up here. gray to go around the edges here because those highlights are just a tiny bit too bright around this portion of the nose they need toned down just a little bit and you know what? I'm gonna even sneak in a little bit more blue I'm gonna use the uh, 435 to bring in just a, a little bit of sky blue in there because they kind of have a, a cooler gray color with a touch of blue. There we go. Easy peasy. All right, I'm going to put these pencils away so that they're out of my way. Uh, the nose and the eye, uh, I'm not gonna say they're 100% done, but they're close. They're close to being done. Uh, but now we are going to move on to the base colors of the fur. I can get rid of my glassine paper, pull back my soft pastels, and so now we're going to start building in some of the colors of the fur. But first I'm going to zoom out. There we go. You guys have you guys have proper names for the blending sticks. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with blending sticks. Although I do like the Netherlands, what they say in the Netherlands, the Dozlars, Do Dozlars. Am I pronouncing that right? I doubt it. <laughs> um, okay, gotta zoom out of my reference photo. Let's start. Let's start up here with the ear. Nice red, dark red brown. I'm gonna just go with this really dark chocolate color. And I have this shape here. So I'm just gonna color that in. see this color I'm just going to put it in there there's there's a lot of flexibility with with uh, 
pastels so you don't have to you don't have to be exact that's the great thing about working with pastels they're very forgiving Kind of just working around the lines of detail that I have. That way I don't lose any of that. And then I can start being a bit more broad with my colors. Can I turn the music down a little bit? Can't hear your voice. Yes, I can turn the music down a little bit. Sure thing. Let me know if that's better. Thank you for letting me know. And I'll try to, uh, as, as difficult as it is for me, I'll try to speak up a little bit so that you can hear me better. Uh, I want one of the things that I want to upgrade uh, very soon is, is my microphone. I, I'd really like to have a higher quality microphone so you guys can hear me really, really well. Alright, uh, now let's see, I'm gonna do some bright colors. a little bit. I think I'm gonna go with this more cream, this cream color. Uh, this blocking in stage can be a little intimidating uh, if you're new to pastels or you're just kind of a new artist in general um, so just take your time with it look for the look for the shapes uh, I've been talking recently a lot about ignoring what it is you're trying to create obviously we're trying to create a wolf here but instead of uh, focusing on the fact that you're creating a wolf instead ignore that and focus more on the shapes that you see and uh, in, in the colors that you see. Um, we're just doing some general shapes uh, where these colors start to pop up a little bit. So there's there's a lot of leeway here, and we're gonna we're gonna blend all this out anyway. It's gonna be soft. Uh, we're not we're not doing any of the major fur detail today. We're just doing the base coloring essentially now I'm gonna snag a little bit of a gray here 
because there's there's a shadow here that I don't want to miss. It's an important shadow. <clears throat> uh, the other thing with with the edges, I'm staying away from the edges because a lot of those details are going to be brought out with the pencils in part two. All right, let's grab nice smoky gray now. This is like a, a nice warm gray color. Goes goes well with the fur here. It's going to take some time to completely cover the paper, but with this with this uh, part, uh, since we're we're not working in all of the details. You actually don't have to cover the paper 100%. You want to leave, you actually want to leave some room here for the pencils for us to do the detailing of the fur with the pencils. So don't feel like you have to cover it 100% like we did the background. Aside from adding the the snowflakes falling in the image, which we will do. Um, the background is is done, and it will be easy to incorporate those snowflakes when we get to them. Let's go with a, a lighter gray, actually even lighter than that. I'm going to incorporate some, some more gray, some light gray around the face. Up towards the nose here. All those, all those little bits of the whisker, don't worry about that just yet. Just try to get the, uh, the color placement. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. Actually, this is, no, this is kind of a, this is an off-white color. It's more of an ivory color, so. It's not quite white. I'm gonna use this to pr protect some of the light parts of the fur. Also to tone down this cream color, because it's a, it's a bit too much, too much red. Probably should have done the base color with the, the ivory, but fortunately pastels are forgiving, as I said.
let's do a little bit darker gray around this part here. See with pastels on like colored pencils you can you can work in both directions. So when we when we blend this base layer out and next week when we start incorporating the pencils into the fur, uh, we'll be able to use the light pencils over top of the dark fur that we that we place here to get the exact like texture and tone of the fur that we want. Alright, now I'm gonna go for the orange bits of the fur with this kind of clay color here. Start up here on the nose. And I'll incorporate a bit of gray into this and some darker browns to get the right saturation because it's a bit a bit oversaturated. This color comes up around the ear over here. It doesn't look like much right now, but this is just the base colors. I'm sure you guys have faith in my ability. We'll get uh, we'll get it looking more like a wolf before we call it a day. We'll put in a little bit more of the preciseness of the color with the with this base layer um, before I call it a day. But uh, let's uh, add a little bit of gray now into that orange just to tone it down. Just using the light gray here. medium gray around the eyes and probably going to do a little bit of blending here just to get the these foundational colors kind of positioned and then we can start getting in there with a little bit more precision uh, so I'm going to take my sponge and flip it over start with the light stuff. Just give it a quick blend here and there. I haven't paid really any attention to like the direction or anything like that. Just building up some of those foundation colors of the fur. They look very very broad right now and they are going to continue looking that way until next week I want to I want to my goal today is to cover the paper but not to completely cover the paper and then just uh, get some of my colors in the right location. That way I have a really good foundation for bringing in the pencils next week. So I'm, I'm going to say that maybe 10-15 minutes left of today's live stream. So if you guys have any questions uh, before I go, make sure you uh, don't wait too long to ask me. 
Uh, and then again, I want to mention that uh, I have all of my supplies in the description. I also have a link to my intro to pastel course that I sell on my website in the description. And also, uh, I do tutorials like this every week. So make sure you subscribe. I also do tutorials like this every Thursday over on my Patreon page, and we are currently still working through a colored pencil tutorial. So if you have more interest than just pastels, I do the colored pencil tutorials over on my Patreon page. Uh, I also do pastel tutorials every once in a while on Patreon also, um, and I have the link for that in the description. And if you enjoy my live tutorials and you uh, want to let me know, you can just give it a thumbs up, give it a share also. We can bring more members into the family. Uh, speaking of family, uh, the Facebook family group, uh, I have a link for that in the description. So if you're not a member of the Unmask family, make sure you join by clicking that link. All right, now we have some of the foundational colors down. I'm going to start building up some of the, the darker contrasts. I'm gonna start with this middle gray. Just uh, start darkening things. And the spots that I see that it's necessary. This is kind of a cool gray. Uh, what is the differences between oil and chalk pastels? Um, the difference is that chalk pastels are worth using and oils are not. It might sound harsh, but I just uh, I I just don't like oil pastels even the the slightest bit. Um, so I just I don't think they're they're a medium worth even trying. I've tried them and I didn't forget how awful it was and uh, I, I haven't I just don't think the interest of ever trying them out again will will come up uh, but the difference is really the binder that's used to hold the pigment together with chalk pastels it's um, what is it uh, a silicon, silica-based binder, I think, uh, where it, with the oil-based, it's, you know, it's an oil-based binder, which it gives it that wet, smeary look. All right, I'm going to go back to some dark brown. Actually, mm, I don't want to go that, that crazy. Uh, yeah, just some dark brown. Um, and when you're joining the Unmasked Family Group, please answer the questions, pretty please, so we can accept you quickly. Uh, yes, that's uh, good. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Chrissy. I appreciate that. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Chrissy is one of the uh, moderators of the group. Uh, so she is one of the uh, few people that can accept new members to the family so just be just be mindful of the rules in the group so that we can keep it uh, nice and friendly and one of the best Facebook groups
just using a different, just uh, combinations of the grays and browns uh, to balance out the the saturation, the form, the contrast, all of that throughout the image. And that is uh, what I am doing. Let's use some of this light gray here. Uh, when I'm blending, how much pressure am I using? That is another excellent question. Um, I am using only enough pressure that is necessary to move the pigment on the paper. Uh, I'm never, I'm never, ever, ever am I pressing hard with pressure um, when I'm blending. Just very faintly to get the, the pigment to, to move across the paper. That, that is all I do. As you increase the number of layers that you're adding, uh, the less pressure that you need to add because the pigment will just slide across the paper very effortlessly. So right here I'm using just a very tiny amount of pressure as I, I want to maintain where I'm putting some of these darker colors so I don't want to press real hard and slide them through all my lighter colors. Uh, where do you buy a roll of glassine paper? Um, Jackson's Art Supply is where I get mine. If you live in, if you live in Europe, that's where I I live in Europe also, so <laughs> that's where I get mine. You might be able to find the cheap on Amazon UK if you live in U in the UK. Not sure what what part of Europe you live in. Uh, but if you live in the United States, I think the the name used there is interleaving paper. Um, uh, glassine paper has a couple different names depending on what part of the world you live in. And I think in the United States, if you look it up on art stores, it's labeled interleaving paper. Which is a really weird name. Now you can start to see a bit of the layers of fur in our woof here. Starting to, uh, it's starting to come to life. Uh, I'm going to do uh, probably one last layer with some color. And I'm going to start with uh, a little bit of this, I think. We'll see. No, that's not dark enough. I'm going to go, I'm going to go black. Mm, yeah, no, dark, dark chocolate brown. I need to get some of these values around the eyes, I think. They're just not, they're just not dark enough. Getting, getting these values here around the eye is going to be uh, more important with the detailing layers. But I want to get a good foundation of it down before calling it a day.
Now, I think I can go with black. Do a little bit with black. And then I will maybe, maybe throw in a touch of highlight in some spots. And that will be it for today. Uh, what is glassine paper? It's Yeah, it's like a wax paper. It, it feels kind of waxy a little bit. It, it feels kind of like tracing paper or like wax paper, something. Uh, I don't think it has wax in it though. I don't, I don't, I doubt it has any wax. Uh, I don't know ex the exact makeup of the paper, but it kind of has a, a waxy feel or look to it. It's not just, it's not regular paper, that's for, that's for sure. It feels more plastic than paper. That way it prevents um, any of the pastel sticking to it, because you don't want you know, you don't want the pastels to stick to it, and I'm not sure if wax paper would prevent that, but um, if you, you see, I buy these, I buy sheets of, uh, or I, I buy the gummed pads of the Clairefontaine pastel mat, and in between the, each sheet of the pastel mat is glassine paper. So I, I utilize those a lot. And then I also have a, a large A1 size sheets of glassine paper for storing, for storing my pastel work once I finish it. Um, I can't guarantee that that tracing paper and glassine paper is the same. Uh, I so I can't say that uh, tracing paper would be okay to use uh, with pastels because I've never done it, and I don't want to say that it's okay and not have done it before. It probably is, and I what I would recommend doing is just testing it out bef on like something you don't really care too much about before just committing to it completely. That will save you the uh, the pain of, you know, potentially messing something up that you really care about. Just about finished for today. I'm gonna to do a little bit of highlighting. Some of these orangey yellow spots on the fur. So I'm just about finished for today. I'm gonna to do one last blending after applying these colors. So again, if you have any last questions, 
try to get to them. Um, how much carryover do you get from one color to the next when you're blending because your tool picking up color? Uh, it varies. It, it, it depends on whether or not you're going from a light color to a dark color. Because if you're going to a light from a light color to a dark color, you're pretty much not going to get much um, like carryover, as what you say. Um, but if you do the opposite, it's going to be a bit more extreme. So it's you just have to be aware that when you're transitioning in between colors with the same blending sponge, uh, because you know you could have you could have a problem with that if you're not careful. So just uh, you know be careful with that, uh, and if it matters, like it doesn't matter too much with this fur because. All the colors are just blending all over the place anyway so um, I have a lot of leeway here with the fur but if you're doing something you know like a skin or portrait or something then you're probably gonna want to be extra extra careful for obvious reasons I don't quite have the yellow have like a, a yellowish color in the fur and I'm not quite getting that yellow the way that I want so like a, a light tan slash orange maybe this is now yeah, this is pretty close to it I want to try to get these these colors exactly the as close as possible to the exact color. I said like I was going to be 10 minutes like 25 minutes ago. <laughs> Uh, where do I get reference photos? I get them all over. Um, one of my favorite places to get reference photos is Upsplash. Uh, some And for my courses and things, I, I buy those reference photos from uh, different sites that, you know, sell the rights to photos. Uh, sometimes I'll just get them from DeviantArt because uh, what I do is I teach so I don't have any limitations to what reference photos I can use because uh, as long as I'm as long as I'm just using it to teach how to do something then it doesn't um, infringe on copyright uh, of course I don't I don't sell the work uh, like I won't be selling this woof or anything like that so um, you know, when it when it comes to doing uh, doing artwork, you can you can use whatever picture you want. You know, if you just want to go to Google Image and get whatever picture that you like, uh, if you have no intent of, of making money from it, you know, selling it or making prints and, and selling it, um, you know, it's not it's not against the law to to color or to draw whatever it is you you want to draw. So. Um, that's that's often a uh, topic that that comes up, and it's just um, it's not as complicated as people tend to make it out to be. It, it, it it's really just you know if you want to color something, just do it, and uh, if you intend to make money off of it, make sure that you have the legal rights to do so. You know. Uh, this this picture of this wolf uh, is actually, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from National Geographic. So it's uh, this is a copyrighted photo in the sense that I can't, you know, use this photo to make prints and and sell it, uh, which I'm totally fine with. I, I'm doing this uh, for tutorial purposes only. So. I don't have any 
I don't have any uh, legality issues with that because I'm teaching using it for educational purposes only. Kind of a copyright loophole. Alright, I think I got enough of the oranges in there. Yeah, I'm gonna do a final blending. Let me just double check if I have any questions. Um, you, asked a co you asked a question about UART paper, um, can you ask it again? I can't, I, I don't want to have to scroll up and try to find it. Um, just go ahead and ask me the question again. I'll be happy to answer it. Okay, Chrissy, uh, thank you for coming by. You have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow for your live stream. I think I have a good foundation for the fur here. And once I get in there with the pencils and start doing all the texture, all the uh, fine texture and, you know, the actual fur texture, because there's not a whole lot of fur texture going on here, uh, this wolf will really, really come to life. And that will happen next Tuesday. Uh, I'll schedule out the live stream event in the Facebook group, the Unmasked Family Facebook group that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, so if you're not a family member, make sure you click that link in the description and uh, then you'll be able to uh, track the event on Facebook uh, if you prefer that and of course I'll have the live stream scheduled here on my YouTube channel also so you can always just subscribe to that and turn on notifications um, if you enjoyed today's live stream and you know learned something from me today uh, be sure to give today's tutorial a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're not because I will do pastel I'll do live pastel tutorials every Tuesday the same time uh, every Monday I do the drawing journal which is just a live stream where you get to hang out and just watch me draw random things and ask me random questions and we just hang out for an hour and chat and do fun things um, and then Thursdays I do the patreon live stream and this week we are trying to finish off a puppy that we started some time ago in colored pencils yeah I think that is a good foundation for the fur so far and that is going to finish up today's tutorial. Um, clean my fingers off a little bit before I say goodbye. Uh, and answer Barbara's question about UART paper. Uh, you're using sanded paper, the UART sanded paper, the background. Some of the shiny bits are showing through. Should I add more black to cover it or just leave it? Um, well, I've. It, it's up to you. Uh, if, if the shiny bits bother you, then you can try to cover it up more. I know the UART paper uh, will get full coverage just like the pastel mat. So it's a personal preference. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Um, do you take the soft part of the soft tools off the handle to wash them every time? Me, no, um, I, I'm, I'm much lazier than that. Uh, so I have container here that holds my sponges. The top container are ones that I've cleaned and the middle container here are the ones that I've used and I have yet to clean. Uh, and I essentially just use the clean ones until I don't have any more and then I clean them all at once. Um, 
and I just use soap and water to clean, clean them out. Oh. Uh, do I have to cover every single bit of the paper with pastel? Um, again, it's a personal preference thing. I like full coverage because I think that it looks nicer, but that is a personal preference and you do not have to. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for coming by and hanging out with me for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next week where I finish off our woof using the Carbothello pastel pencils. Uh, remember, I have the link for all my supplies in the description. And that is going to be it. So I will see you all next time. Take care. Peace.